Hello, 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 hello. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is, wherever you are listening. Uh, today on the podcast, with me as always, Mr. Chris Q. Hello. Uh, unfortunately, Richard's not with us again today. He's uh, He says he's feeling a bit poorly. I personally think he's playing snow uh, angels in his pile of routers. <laughs> um, but there you go. Um, also with us, uh, being the spotlight of the show today is a wild card craftsman. Used to be uh, five by thirty workshop, Mr. Julian Martinez, the second, the second, the second, or yeah, the eleventh, or I, I, however you want to call it. Either way, as long as I know uh, me, or yeah. toothpicks. <laughs> Julian uh, Martinez before... toothpicks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> toothpicks. <laughs> Two toothpicks. Um. Before we get proceedings under uh, underway, we must mention the uh, the sponsors of the of the show. So today's podcast is brought to you in part by Yorkshire Grit, the wood turns abrasive paste. Our good friend Chad over at Man Crafting, who still gives away his awesome powder coated Yeti mugs, pan from Highland boxes with our awesome, amazing hybrid uh, resin blanks, and of course Steve Newton, who also takes all my credit for the uh, podcast chat uh, website and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for that, Steve. Uh, for more information about our sponsors, go to Magazine International Podcast Forward Roll Sponsors. So, yeah, uh, that's all the uh, all that kind of business done with. Um, Chris, do we have any random listener questions? I no doubt Andy's put something there. Oh, he's got some, and there's a, there is a plethora of questions from Mr. Martinez. And if you know Julian, you know why there is a plethora of questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, before we get into that, I, I wanted to say hi to a, a dear lady that I happen to really like, Anna. Anna B is out in the chat, and Anna, how you doing? I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but I miss you, honey. Where, where have you been? Um, and I know, okay, whatever. Anyway, hi. Um, <laughs> All right, questions from Mr. Martinez. Mr. M- and my wife would kill me because I didn't roll my tongue. Mr. Martinez. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you, are, you, are you part Hispanic, Julian? Yes. Uh, my, father, my father's side is uh, Mexican. My grandparents came from Mexico. So uh, okay. I don't speak a lot of Spanish at all. I don't really speak any Spanish. I do love Mexican food, though. That's not spicy. Okay. <laughs> you like my wife. You like my wife because my yeah, my 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 wife's mother is is hundred percent Mexican. My her f- father is half Mexican, half Portuguese, uh, and okay. she she speaks perfect Californian, um, <laughs> but she doesn't exactly. she doesn't understand a lick of uh, uh, Spanish. Anyway, and mm. Mm. yeah. And her family looks down or down upon her on that. Shame on you. She goes, eh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> um, I do have questions. And Mr. Pugh okay. blessed us with several. And there are several more that are thrown in there as well. Um, and Andy, if you don't mind, I'm going to rearrange the order in which you ask these questions just because I'm going to start with a starting point here. Um, I imagine what Andy has for me. Oh, boy, he's got some fun ones. Uh, but let's start with an easy one. What's your history with making, Julian? Does it fit into your job, or is it just kind of an escape that you've found? Um, uh, explain. Um, so I don't know if it really goes with what I do for a living. I do controls, so it's kind of like a low-voltage um, wiring. So we hook up HVAC systems and stuff like that, make sure everything in the building works together, valves and everything, and talks together. Um, before I did that, I was, uh, I did networking and telecommunications. Um, so it's all working with my hands, but really it's not really involved with woodworking mostly. Uh, I, I do it to, as an escape. I do it to keep my mind busy, to keep me busy. Uh, as most people nowadays probably need that being stuck inside. Um, but yeah, it's always, I've always had a creativeness and always wanted to build stuff and make stuff. So I guess it's kind of more of an escape than, than work, but it does come in handy at work whenever we do have some things come up that, you know, you got to think a different way of doing things. So, so were you one of those kids that took apart the toaster um, yep. on your mom and then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, then so, managed to put it back together like it seemed it would work and then it just never really did again? Um, wait, they go back together? Yeah. <laughs> we always have like spare phones and like spare. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, sorry, man. For, for the younger crowd, we had the rotary phones and the push buttons, the wired phones, not wireless back in the day. And so I, I would take apart those. I would take apart 
other little things that I knew that I, if I couldn't put back together, that it was okay. <laughs> so I just like seeing how things went together and, and why they worked or how they worked and how they worked. I used to do that. I used to do that to my toys. It used to drive my father nuts because you know they would spend you know what they fi- what they felt was a lot of money on a toy, and then you know the day after they'd be crisp with a wrench taking it apart. <laughs> it's like, going, what are you? Doing, it's like I want to see how it works, Daddy. Uh, you're an idiot. So I need up, them yeah, break cables, a... huh? I need them break cables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, uh, yeah. Common sense is a youth; it just doesn't exist. Um, let me see. Where do I go from here? Um, I, I, okay, here's a question. Because a little backstory. Because you're originally from Texas. What part of Texas? Uh, born and raised in Dallas. Dallas. Yep. So go okay. Cowboys. It's hard to say that nowadays, but. No, okay. No, and I'm not. Shh, I don't talk football anyway because, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Normally I know. people see me in this hat. And so, yeah. you know, um, so my question has, my, my question revolves around that sport. Um, so are you a Rangers, Astros, or now an Orioles fan? Because I know you now live in Maryland. Uh, I have always been a Rangers fan. When we moved from Texas to Virginia, I became an O's fan as well. So I do like both Rangers and the O's, and it's and it, it's cool because they do play each other twice a year. Mm-hmm. So when when living here, we tend to try to I try to at least I would like to at least catch one game where it's in between. When we were living back home in Texas, because my wife and I lived down there for I think four years, three or four years, uh, we would try to catch a game down there. Because, you know, they play in both cities. So it's it's nice to sit there and see both teams. So I, I cheer them both on. I mean, they neither awesome. one of them are that great, but. <laughs> no, and we, and, no, but we talked about this before we went on the air today. Yeah. It says the Orioles have a fantastic ballpark. Camden Yards cool. is one of the best ballparks in America as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. The Ranger Stadium, the old stadium. I used to love the Ranger Stadium. Uh, now they have the new one. Uh they have a new one now, and I haven't been to it yet, but I've heard some good things about it. And granted, really can't go to it yet because of COVID. So, but I'd like to get down there and go to a game down there one day at the new stadium. Well, you're going to hate me for saying this, but because um, I live in the Northeast and I happen to be a Red Sox fan, we used to we used to call Camden Yards Fenway South. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because, and here's the deal: because we would go down to um, Baltimore. Uh, to watch the Red Sox play the Orioles. Um, and the whole entire park, uh, three quarters of it was filled with Red Sox fans. Yep. And there was like one quarter of, of, of Baltimore so, Orioles fans there. And so we always used to call it Fenway South. And when I used the to locals the never airport. appreciated that. Well, the locals never nah. really appreciated us referring it to that. No, nah, they don't. But when, <laughs> when I used to work at the airport, uh, we would know, like I wouldn't even watch, I would know exactly when the Red Sox were in town. Or when the Yankees were in town, yeah, because you get just swarms of people from up there coming down here to watch the game. Because, like you and I talked earlier, it was cheaper to fly down here and get a game, and pay for a game and watch the game here than it was to actually go to your stadium and just go to your stadium. So it was, it is, mm. a bit longer, <laughs> a bit longer of a drive, but the but the ticket price and the seating you can get was. Hundred percent better. All right. Um, now, you, now, you've, now you've finished talking about silly boys rounders. Let's bring up the tone a little bit. Boxes or briefs? Briefs. Uh, yeah, boxer briefs. Actually, technically. There you go. Oh, I'm happy now. Boxer briefs. I, I always, I always paid you as a commando guy. Um, and but that's all right. That's okay. No, that's, depends on how many how many drinks I have. Well, no. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> that brings us to our next subject. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez! All right, let's go. Have you what always, a segue. <laughs> have you have you always taken showers with inanimate objects? <laughs> and haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to answer that because that would dignify the question. No, I really haven't. <laughs> um, but Andy's question is with with regard to shower beers, and Jamie, you may want to fill in the backstory here before we get into this for people that aren't familiar with Julian and his antics in the in the shower. So I go right ahead, my friend. I go need right to bring ahead. it back. 
Yeah, Julian needs to bring it back. So Julian is the uh, well, the, the owner, the, the CEO, the manager, the the treasurer, the the everything. <laughs> owner, of, the uh, co-owner, of what's the founder, the, the, the semi- corporate founder. headquarters of yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, he he is the uh, the, the shower beer club. Um, and a, a few other people will partake in it um, <laughs> as well. Uh, the, the shower beer club is uh, is exactly what it sounds: is you have a shower with a beer. Uh, that's exactly. It's exa- there's no sugar coat in it. That is exactly at, at what it is on the tin. Well, Julian, was H two H two O not enough to quench your thirst, and you needed to bring the beer in there because the water is hitting you in the face? I mean, <laughs> so. It's- to kind of start off, which I know I'm not the original founder of it. I know it's been going on for for decades, but it's just one of those things where you are getting ready. You want to go out or you've already started, you've already had a beer and you want to take a shower real quick so you can get clean and do whatever you want. But you don't, you're not going to leave your beer out there. You just might as well go ahead and take it in the shower and finish it off. <laughs> so I just started drinking it in there. It's, 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 it's to help speed up time, you know? It's all, right, here's the, all right, all right, okay. So we've <laughs> we've determined the premise on which the questions will now be asked. Um, and you know what? And God love you, Jillian, because you know we need Mavericks like you in the world. Um, uh, Andy's question is: <laughs> This is rather humorous. And Andy, thank you for asking this because it cracked me up when I read it. Are bottles better than cans in avoiding dilution of the beer, or is it the other way around? Honestly, it doesn't really matter. At all. What, what your main thing is where you put it in the beer and put it in the shower. Me, I'm more of a pro. I can keep. I can get it closer to the. I can get it closer to the to the spout, to the shower head, than most others, and not have to worry about the beer. Others might want to put it all the way at the very end, but apparently they sell this new handy dandy thing it's called the shower beer caddy. I, I personally. <laughs> Oh God! You My serious? wife got me this. This just sticks <laughs> right onto the wall. You just put your beer right there, and, and you hold it. And it's just in the little pocket. It's like a beer. <laughs> but I've seen this. People have tagged me in this thing for years now, and I always say, you know, that's cool. That's a good way to start off. But that's for amateurs. I'm not. I'll be putting one in there anyways, just because maybe I might want to have two drinks. Yeah, you can always cork it with something. Yeah, but no. Once you get, once you figure it out, I mean, have you ever had a beer whenever you've out, been out in the workshop? I mean, you got or any kind of drink at that point. You can have wait, a wait, are, you, are, you ta- are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm talking to anybody. I mean, <laughs> I can't, I can't I, say I, I have. I thought I've made that answer relatively obvious. <laughs> I mean, yeah. My issue there is I can't tell you how many times I've drank walnut or whatever I'm turning at that point because <laughs> it just goes right into my right into my soda or water beer whatever i have at that point oh well you know what i don't yeah. well okay i'm not gonna be the safety, <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna be the safety seller on you but i i honestly don't drink anything until i'm done working with what i'm doing or you know when it when, when i spend most of the time out my shop and i and i, I crack a beer open and I'm, it's when i'm doing finishing yeah or, that's or, usually when i do or, or i have or, one beer just to start and then or sanding or something like that yeah, but so yeah, I mean to answer your question, mm-hmm. it's oh boy, if my walls could talk. Um, <clears throat> um are certain types of beer better than others for shower beers? No, it's whatever your personal choice is. And to be fair, our stipulations also are not just a beer. So if you if you didn't like beer and you wanted to have a whiskey in there, go ahead and have a whiskey in there. At all we just put shower beer as you know a general, but it encompasses any kind of Drink. I've had people come up and say, "What about tea?" You know what? If you want to, that's fine. Personally, have you ever had, have you ever had a shower moonshine? I think you know that answer, Jamie. <laughs> Weren't you there too? <laughs> May have been with Sterling. Uh, oh, Sterling all Davis. three of us, all Sterling three of us at Davis. the same time. Wait, did you? My, guys, wait, 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 wait. I have to ask the ignorant question again. I think I already know the answers. Were you guys uh, share, possibly sharing a hotel room? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Jamie? possibly sh- possibly sharing the shower. <laughs> there there, there may, or may or may not have been a lot of makers there. Maybe mm-hmm. Myron Mike, <laughs> Ken, Moon. Ball, Ken Moon. Uh, where was Jamie, me? Where was I when all this festivity was happening? Where? Wh- let me let me ask you a question. All right, where, where? What event did this happen at? That was in Atlanta. 
the last uh i think it was the last one wasn't it yeah the last we worked yeah. show in atlanta no where was i where was i i, I think you had something you had a wedding or something if i'm correct i did i you're right i remember i did i have to go i had to go somewhere oh what a drag that would have been uh you know i, I don't know what i would have participated <laughs> yes yes i would have <laughs> um but i i would have certainly taken pictures um <laughs> Oh, there's pictures. Yeah, you didn't have to do there is pictures. Oh, they're probably posted. <laughs> they're somewhere if you can find them. Why I I don't doubt that is is really anyway. Um it, <laughs> should the shower be at a particular temperature to keep the beer at its best? Well, I mean, you want a nice cold beer, you don't want it really, really hot, but I also can't take cold showers because things shrink and I and it's harder to wash things when they're shrunk. So um, I tend to take hot showers, but that also means I got to finish my beer quicker. That way it doesn't get warm. Have you ever fallen down in the shower? <laughs> which I mean, is, the, got, which is, I mean, let's be honest. That's a good question. I mean, it's like, you know, Hey, because of the shower beard. No, because of somebody leaving something slippery in the shower. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this isn't like a, a cake party in the shower that you're having. This is, you know, to the point where you get stupid and fall on your ass. All right. I cool. know, like I said, it started off because, you know, if we were going to go out to a bar or something like that, you know, just a quick pregame, drink a beer or two. And then it's a primer. It's a primer. Basically, the, yeah. It's you're a primer for the up. evening. And I swear to Honestly, guys, I swear to God, I've never had a beer in a shower in my entire life. I, I, I have to change that. No, well, I've had a golden shower. No, I, I've always no. I no. I, I will say this: I've taken a beer into the bathroom with me, but I've never actually brought it into the shower. I've always left it like on the cabinet, um, so when I got out, it was there. But well, just a little tip: if you have a shelf, because you know most most of them have shel shelves. If you have right. a shelf and you get it above where the water comes down, uh huh, shoot out. That's less water you have to worry about. Now, I don't know about how you wash your hair. I don't sit there and do this. You know, some <laughs> people do. I just do this, and I have to, I don't have to worry about it getting into the beer. So, Okay. A little pro tip. Well, when I had really long hair because I was growing it out, I, I probably wouldn't have worked. But today, it probably would. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> okay, God, enough with the shower beers. Um <laughs> <laughs> What's your history? With, uh, and Jamie, this is the, I guess this is, this is the, this is the original question. Um, what is your history of making? Does it fit um, how you grew up? Did your dad teach you? Did your mom teach you? Was it just you kind of initiating uh, the whole interest thing on your own? I mean, um, where did it come from? And, and how'd you get involved in the maker community? So I grew up with uh, a father who would prefer to, to make things and to, to repair things on the self instead of having somebody else come in, especially if it's something small. So we always did like small projects, nothing like my dad, I'll sit there and tell you now, he's like, you're way above what I ever was. Um, like he loves looking at the stuff I do. So it started off with that. I guess the real first experience I had growing up is when my wife and I were back home in Dallas, she, she used to be an international flight attendant and she would collect, one of the things that she would collect was shot glasses from all around the world. Right. So we have over 200 shot glasses or something like that. And they're, they're more decoration. We don't drink out of them really. So I wanted to display them in the house. So the first thing I built was like a shelf that went all the way around. Like if you see behind me, like it kind of went all the way around the outside of the kitchen kind of. So it was like, it was a nice display. That was the first thing I made really janky. And then, if you look back over on this side over here, that's a liquor cabinet that I built in the apartment um, later on. But I just started building small things, started off on a balcony with little hand tools, like a handsaw, some chisels, my drill, a hammer, and that's pretty much it, tape measure and a square. So um, just started doing that, and then I just wanted to, to learn more. So I started watching YouTube. Um and started watching some of the guys like Izzy Swan, who is a great guy, he's still phenomenal. I still am in awe every single time I talk to him. Oh, Izzy's, uh, Izzy's, Izzy's fantastic. He's just a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every, everybody like that. And then I started getting into, started doing an Instagram when I when we moved. Actually, I had an Instagram, I think, right before we moved from there. And then 
started meeting people in the maker community, learning more, doing more. And then somehow it was a oh, West Swan. Uh, Swain. I, Swain. Yeah. He, he was following me and was like, Hey, I'm going to send you this link. And he sent me a link to the original. I like to make stuff like first group. Awesome. So that's, that's where I got involved in the maker community. And I just sat there. And one of the first things I did is I told him, I was like, I saw everybody that was in it. And I was like, these are people I literally watch on YouTube. I was like, I don't belong in this group. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I was like, I, I'm intimidated. Yes, I was intimidated, 100% intimidated. I was like, I don't belong in this group. I'm not like this. He goes, no, he's not. And he sent me a picture of something I did, something small. It was funny and stupid. And I started watching. I didn't post much. And I started watching how the guys reacted. I was like, okay, these are these are people like me, kind of, you know, they're, they're normal people. And then, like, some of the jokes they would do, and I started getting involved in that. And then just, I guess, I don't know, just got involved in there. Then I met Jamie, and that's where everything fell short. Oh, man, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of short, how tall are you, Julian? With or without my boots, that's the question. Well, I'm not talking about your four-foot high heel boots. <sighs> Five, six, flat-footed. There you go. Five, he was nine. actually the shortest person at that Atlanta show we was talking about. <laughs> Julian, I happen to love you, because you, you may be one of the very few people that I'm actually taller than. Um <clears throat> It's not hard. It's not hard to be taller than me. <laughs> I thought that would cheer you up, Chris. Well, I mean, you and Matt Cremona. I mean, Matt Matt can't be more than five six, five seven. I'm I'm telling yeah. You. I still haven't met him yet, and I I want to just so I can see who's taller. Oh no, Matt's a but good. To be man. fair, Jamie Jamie and them always taught me to take my boots off, which everybody else gets to have shoes on. So why can't I have my boots? Well, you can have your boots. It's just that. You know, the cowboy boots. So here's here's my deal, because uh, I mean I understand you come from Texas, so there's your roots. In Texas, the boots nobody's ever going to freaking notice. In Baltimore, the boots people are going to go, "Who's this hick? Who's that? believe <laughs> it or not? That's all that's all I wear are cowboy boots, and you don't really. I mean, unless you're actually looking down, you don't notice them. Um, so I don't really get too much guff. I'll get I'll get people come up like. Oh, where's your horse out, Tex? I'm like, you do realize I am from Texas, and uh, my horse is not around here. So <laughs> now, yeah, that, that, when, I, had, when I was in Texas, that's one thing I barely even saw was horses. I saw around. more in like New Mexico and Arizona. Yeah, they're they're out there, but uh, you see more. When I wear my cowboy hats, my cowboy hats now, I I get questioned, I get stopped about that. So I don't try to wear those outside of the house really, unless I'm going somewhere that's. Well, I grew up in the, I grew up in the South. And I used to have friends that we used to wear them, them cowboy, the cowboy boots. And I used to ask, and I never did. I just, I, it just wasn't my thing, guys. Um, but I used to ask them how many cockroaches they killed that were in corners that day because, you know, they got those, so the pointy toes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You, you can kill a cockroach in a corner with some of those boots. Um, so anyway. Most of my boots are square toe boots. I personally like square toe boots. Um, I do have some pointy toe boots. They're my nicer boots. Uh, I do have, some pointier square toes, um, but they're not like. Well, let me let me ask. Okay, let's see how down and dirty you get. Do you do square dancing, or do you not know how to do it? Uh, square dancing, no. Line dancing and two stepping and waltzing, yes. I can do a little bit of East Coast swing. Um, oh, hot damn! So. Well, 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 hell's bells, good buddy. Let's go out and have some fun. Uh. Actually, it's been a while since. So actually, no. Uh, we went. When we we uh right before thanks right before Halloween we actually went back to Dallas and uh, we mainly went there to go to a haunted house and to eat because you can't get good food like that up here. So mm-hmm. we actually we were we left the haunted house which is an amazing haunted house down there in Fort Worth. Actually, I don't think it's too far from Bobby and uh, Nicole from the Dukes. Um, but we were like, let's go out somewhere, and I was like, you know what, Billy Bob's right around the corner. I've never been. I was like, let's go to Billy Bob's. So we went to Billy Bob's that night and I got to dance and I hadn't danced in a while. So I personally like dance. I've been dancing since I was 13 or 14. I've been dancing around the place my entire life. Um, <laughs> well, ben, I was about to say, I ben was about to say uh, the, on the pole, but. Uh, Show us the boots. Which pair? Whatever you're wearing right now. Uh, well, what I'm wearing right now are my, one of my pairs of work Ariats. I do have some special boots, though. Hey, babe. Hold on. Let me go get my special boots if it's all no, right. No, no, no. Stay, no, stay, stay, stay there. <laughs> Those, uh, 
the boots you're wearing are the typical. Uh, I'm a cow hand and I'm working Every around ice. the farm. Yeah, those They're are yeah. Toe. These are still toe. I don't wear these at work anymore because I, you know, they got old. They got holes in them. So no, those those are what are known as the shit kickers. I mean, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. these I wear out in the shop in the summer. Forgive my French. Uh, if, oh, I got a, uh, I got some uh, boots from America. back home that were, the top of them is a Texas flag. So. Awesome. That is awesome. Mm. All right, let's get into your making a little bit. Um, All right, uh, Jamie, do you have any questions you want to you want to throw his way, or do you want me to go ahead and keep going on? Um, it's it's a little bit outside of making, but um, I kind of want to talk to Julian or let let him embrace the fact that I'm not sure people knew that Julian was a little bit of a, a an athlete back in his days, and a, a little bit of a fighter, let's say. Yeah. I don't think people knew that much about him. No, most people don't know that about me because I don't look like one. Um, and I'm not talking about street fighting. I used to, so I've wrestled most of my life, at least as I'm getting older, that, that comes down shorter. But uh, I wrestled for about 10 years, um, all the way from like third or fourth grade, all the way up through high school. I refereed wrestling eight years after that. Um, I did... Uh, jiu-jitsu and MMA for about four to five years after that. It's just something I personally like. I like being aggressive. I like, I guess, I don't know. I don't like getting hit in the face, but. Is, is, <laughs> is, that, is, is that just another form of release for you? Is yeah, for like me, yeah. Because I, I can get pretty angry very quickly sometimes. And so that's why I try to make things because it calms me down. But that, that was always a way that I could always release any pent-up energy I had. So I, I understand that. I mean, having, having, having my wife, my wife is Mexican in case you didn't know, um, mm -hmm. having, ha having that, having that light, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't take very long to burn down. And she's married to an Irishman whose light doesn't burn down very quick, very shortly either. Um, I understand that. And so we all look for outs. Um, that's cool. So, so you want to know what's even worse is that I'm actually Irish and Mexican. So I've got both, both short oh, fuses. <laughs> boy. And you've got a short wick. You've yeah. got one of them really short. Yes. Yeah, like, Which is funny because I actually stay calm, calmer than what most people think. I think it's one of those. I try to talk myself down and be like, I'm not going to do anything. Just let it go. So yeah. I'm, I am more of a lover than a fighter. If there is a way to get out of it without having to be aggressive in any way, I'm definitely going to take that route first. But you know what I've learned, and I learned this from my father, uh, from my father-in-law, my wife's father, and he's he, you know he's up in he's up in age and years. Um, but I swear to you, he won't admit it. But the man has developed a masterclass in selective hearing. <laughs> he he. <laughs> He only hears what he wants to deal with, and what he doesn't want to deal with, he doesn't hear. Um, and and you can tell because I'll be talking to him with this voice voice right here, or his wife will be talking to him at the same volume I'm talking to him, and she will say something, and he will just tune her out, and then I'll go, "Hey Joe, do you want to go to a ball game?" And he'll go, oh yeah, you know, same volume, <laughs> no problem. It's like he, he has selective freaking hearing. Um, let's get into your making though, because Andy Pugh has some questions regarding that. Okay. Um, because I know you do. I know you like like Jamie. You do both. Um, scrolling um, and turning. If you had to choose between wood turning and scrolling, what would it be and why? That's if you had to choose. Not not necessarily you don't want to, but if you had to, which would it be? Honestly, I'm interested yeah, in this. Yeah, I see you, Jamie. Honestly, scrolling. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I, I have an artistic side, and I think I can do more with scrolling. There's so many different levels of scrolling I can do. Turning, there's only so many things you can turn around, which I know there are other turners out there who can off-turn, and I know I'm going to get – Junk for that, but they they uh they do off center turn turning. There's a lot of things turning. you can do on a lathe too. Yeah, yeah. but for me, it's more the art fact of looking at it. So there's there's multiple different tiers of scrolling. Jamie, I'll tell you, you got you got people like uh, Dale does a great job with uh, his scrolling where he's cutting them out and he is painting them, but they go back together. He does have some levels to it. You have some other ones that are, you know, basically you're cutting out pieces like this. Um, which is awesome, by the way. 
so thank you. I still got to finish this up. Um, then you have, you know, that's, that's the main thing that people do. Then you have people like Justin who, uh, scroll saw scribbler who does amazing work, but don't tell him I said that. Don't yeah. tell him I said that. You got big a lot, so I guess he can go back and see, but I won't personally tell him, <laughs> <laughs> but then you have stuff that he does where he literally takes pictures and drawings and stuff and converts it into wood and uh, wood art. And it's amazing. So there's so much more to do. And there, there's, it's not just the cutting out part of those. It's literally because I know how his mind works. He makes the grain work for pieces that he does. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, that I've, in I've... itself is a skill. Um, you know, I like, I like seeing different layers and stuff like that. Um, so honestly, that's, that's what I would go with. Uh, I have been turning a lot more lately. And the main reason why I've been turning is because I've been turning pins and I've been selling them. So for, for the business aspect, yes, turning is great because I can make pens and sell them. People love them. They're quick. A scroll saw piece, Jamie, I mean, that, what was it? The Bobby Duke piece took you 24 hours, right? Uh, I think that took me 19 hours. 19. What was it that took you 24? There was something else that took you 24. What uh, was that? I've took like 30 hours. It was well over 30 hours. The, the, um... The queen, how long did that take you? 30 hours. That's a 30. Okay, that's it. Like things like that, you just sit there and it's not, that's not sitting there. You don't sit there and do it all in one sitting. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice. Sometimes it's nice to come out. I mean, that's the other thing about turning that I like is that I could take this pen. Like if the blank was already made, if I already made the blank, I can go in there, have this thing done in an hour. You know, I see the fin start, finish, start piece, and I see the finishing all in one sitting. So that's the way I kind of look at my lathe turning, too, because when I was – and trust me, I've turned my fair share of pens, and Jamie could tell you the story later. Um, but <clears throat> I enjoy going into and using my lathe as a quick fix. Like, you know when you're not going to – when you know you're not going to have a lot of time in your shop yeah. or, for, or for your shop, it's nice to get in there and turn a quick pen just to get your fix. So that you, you're in the shop, you're doing what you want to do, and then you can, you know, finish that up, yeah. be proud of what you did, and then go on and do what you have to do for the rest of the day. It's just, it's kind of a quick fix for me. Yeah, it's that's a good way of putting it. I didn't think about that. But you also see, too, I can go in there and turn a pen that's, you know, a wooden pen or an acrylic pen, and you have that satisfaction of seeing all the chips and all the shavings and stuff from it and saying, look, I did work here. Look at all this. Look at all this mess. Whereas in scrolling, there's not a lot. I mean, it's a fine cut. There's fine sawdust. You don't really see it because it's underneath the scroll saw. So you look at it. You can sit there and be turning for five hours and look. I've got all these pieces here, but look at how much more I have left. It could be. It could be daunting. I mean, granted, smaller pieces like the one I just showed, the lady in red, that doesn't take long. I can have this done. Granted, I've had this for almost a year, maybe or so, and I haven't finished it because. The only thing it needs now is the frame, and I just I stop there, and I'm like, uh, now I got to change up and do something else. Whereas turning, it's all done on the same machine. Um, but yeah, I would I would I would because I zone out when I scroll, and that's and what it, I like. And you know what? It, mm. And um, Ben Jamin once again chimed in and said that, um, and he may or may not be right about this. Um, that scrolling mm. seems to be like a cheaper hobby to get into. And if you have to, and excuse me, um, you can do it indoors. And you know what? I guess in some, it depends on who your wife is, as far as the indoors goes. But, <laughs> but believe but, it or not, I've watched putting the scroll saw and the lathe inside, and I know that I can't do that because my wife. If I did it, it would have to. I would have to tape off the whole house, like like Dexter. Like I was about to yeah. dispose of a body yeah. that way. Nothing got all over the place. But, but, but theoretically, Ben, yeah, you're right. Um, you, 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 scrolling can be done because like Julian mentioned, it doesn't make that much of a mess, but you just got to be prepared to clean it up to make your wife happy. Um, yeah. um, but to be, to, to go back to what Ben was saying, uh, Jamie, I think you would agree too. Scrolling is a cheaper hobby to get into because you're looking at what my mid lathe, my, my Rikon costs about six, $700, something like that. And that's just for the lathe itself. That's not including the chisels, the carbides, the uh, yeah. uh, centers, the, the, what am I chucks, the, the waxes, the oils. The chuck, yeah. yeah. And then you got to throw in the wood to go on it every time you need to do something. 
Yeah, and then you've got then you've got on top of that you've got a. Uh, the blanks themselves, or if you go doing like a spindle versus a pen versus, you know, bowls, you got different setups for that. Like pen turning is an expensive hobby to start. Like you yeah, got to well, have a good amount of money to start up. And you know, if you're and using then, traditional tools, you need a sharpening system too. So yeah, I'm sharpening about that. Systems. Um, so yes, scrolling's a lot cheaper. If you go out there and buy scroll saw blades, mm. you could buy a dozen scroll saw blades for under Cheap 20 bucks. Anything. Even cheaper than that. I mean, that's for, that's for the good blades too. Granted, there's a lot. There's a lot of different types of blades you can use. Me, I know Jamie and me and Dale only use maybe two to three different sizes. Well, I'm talking about sizes too. Oh, okay. Or types, yeah. Because with now scrolling is a little bit awkward whenever you come to just the blades themselves. You have different brands. You have different types. Uh, skip tooth, uh, reverse skip tooth, reverse blades. Uh, you got the Pegasus modern geo uh, modified geometry. You got the spiral blades, and a lot of people are like, "Well, I don't know this question. Why do I need all these?" You don't need all those. Me, I just run either a number three, a number five. Uh, it's rare I ever have a seven, but three and fives are usually the size blades I have in there. So, learning it, I guess, is daunting. Learning to set up the tool is. But a it's not. Daunting. It may be daunting, Julian. But like, um, I'll go back to what Ben said. Um, it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah to, I mean, I mean, because I mean, anybody who's new is going to have to dive into something. Yeah. And it, you, I mean, you if think you're going to dive really into something, plywood. and if you're going to dive into something, then yeah. scroll sawing may be one of, I'm not saying the, but one of the cheaper options to do so. And you kind of learn what you're mm. talking about with the threes and the fives and the blades. Yeah. You, you kind of have to dive into it and do it. You, you got to, you got to figure it out um, on yeah. your own. And it may take some time. Yeah. On top of that, you got you got cheaper methods of doing it too. Like Jamie will tell you, I'm one of the guys that that'll sit there and say, if somebody posts a, posts a question about looking at getting into scrolling, what scroll saw should I get? There are people out there who will instantly go to Dewalt 788. Mm -hmm. I'm not not that I'm against the Dewalts, but that's a four hundred dollar. That's not including the stand. That's a four hundred dollar thing that you're starting off with that you don't even know if you're gonna like. And a lot of people get turned away from scrolling. Because they're trying to go on a line or, you know, they don't have the tension set up right or the right blade and they're trying to go down a line and that and it's going like this and they're over adjusting, you know, they don't they don't know how to start off. So I always tell people there's amazing work you can get done on a Harbor Freight scroll saw on a wind scroll saw. You know, it's yeah, the, the real on, cheap, there's, there's a cheaper way of starting off. And then once you get used to it, then you can go to the higher ones. If you want to go to Dewalt, the Excalibur. Mm -hmm. Let me, uh, let me ask you. Let me ask a question, though. Let me ask you a question, though. If if if, and and and, and I'm honest question. If somebody starts off with with one of the uh, less expensive models, be it Harbor Freight or Win or whatever the case may be, would would the fact that they're using an inferior tool not also turn them off on it? I mean, only because it doesn't um, perform as well. And I'm not, I'm not, hey, look, I'm not saying no, if we should I'm go out and spend $800 on a freaking scroll saw to start with. I'm just saying, I'm wondering if there isn't a happy medium that may be a better course. Um, I, I have thought about that because I, I started off with a craftsman, like a, a, a cheap craftsman scroll saw. And I've done, I mean, most of the stuff that I have that I've posted is, is uh, in my words, amazing. Like, to, if, if, Somebody saw that they wouldn't have thought I did that on a craftsman. Same um, as me. Because every single time I had to change out the blade, or if I went to do an inside cut, I would have to untension the whole back end, take it off, do it, and then retension it and make sure the tension was right. That's really annoying, really daunting. So yes, that can be. Um, I tell people you could still do it. I mean, if you cut off, if you if you start with basic things like the lady in red that I have, that's two inside cuts. Literally, or three, sorry, three inside cuts. But if you learn how to do things like that, or if you cut out pieces like how Justin does it, uh, the main thing you won't really want is the blades. Um, but yes, it, it can be daunting because sometimes they don't they don't adjust. Um, that's why you got to kind of learn how you got to learn your scroll saw and learn how to adjust it properly. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the one thing I see a lot of is a new new scrollers, beginner scrollers, is that they don't. They don't have the tensioning right. They don't know the tensioning sounds. They don't, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard to learn. Um, there are but some videos you, out there, not to, to my own horn. I do have some videos out there um, that I started that I need to 
Jamie, I tell Jamie this all the time. I need to get back into doing it, scrolling for beginners. Um, but yes, it, it could be a turnoff, but it's also more of a turnoff to me that if you have never scrolled before and you go out and spend $400 on a scroll saw plus the stand, which is another hundred, and then you realize you don't like it. That's no, that's no, I agree. No, I agree with you. I mean, it's, I think it's best just kind of leave it at, um, you know what, if you can, if, if you're into scroll sawing or if you want to get into it, then buy what your enthusiasm will allow you to invest. Um, yeah. And it doesn't matter what you can afford. I mean, because there are folks out there that can't afford more than a Harbor Freight, which is fine. And mm -hmm. there's no shame in that. And, you know, like you said, you can find enjoyment and you can do really good work on that thing. But if you have the wherewithal and you're able to go out and buy something between a DeWalt and a Wynn, and 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 get into it that way, and if that's what you can afford. The best advice I think we can oh we and I think we've always we've covered this many times is buy the best you can afford. Yeah, and then go at it, and I then go at it, mm -hmm. and then go at it. I can always sell it. Anyway, because I mean, you know, as, as we make a joke about it, and Jamie knows this, and Richard knows it as well. We make a joke about scroll song. We always go ah. You know, I was going to kick you off the podcast today because you said scroll saw. Uh, but I, I really do admire you guys that do great scroll saw work because I'm just, I'm, it, maybe it's because I don't have the right machine. Maybe it's because I have that cheap machine because, uh, Julian, I have a flat blade machine that's pin blade that, okay. came, that came from the 1970s. Okay. So that's the only experience. Is it the yeah, it is. It's the I only one of those, but I never used it. And I, my, my dad still has it and I want it because I want to be able to sit there and take some of these guys that sit there and say, Oh, you can't do anything with. No, you can, no, you can, no, you yeah, can, you because there are different sizes. There, there, really? really? <laughs> there are different sides blades that you can do with it. Now, granted, you're not going to be able to do the tight turn that a spiral blade will allow you to do on a different scroll. True. So but you can get, you can come close to it. Um, so no, I'm not yeah. saying that it's just, does this thing vibrates like a mother? You know, it's like, it's just not fun to use. Um, if and maybe that one's not a variable speed. That's the, that's literally, you just turn on and it goes. That's yeah, a single wow. speed. That's a, yeah. blah, 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 and that's what this you is. Also, so I had to learn that I, I, a lot of my scrolling, I learned to, to do at a slower speed for simple fact is my craftsman. If you cranked it up past a certain number, it would sit there and it would sit there and bounce as I'm sitting there like. <laughs> trying to cut things like this because I never had anything like bolted down. One, if you bolt it down, it, it does help out. But two, sometimes things are loose. Um, if, if people are having that issue, one thing I would say is try checking underneath, seeing if the bed's tight, seeing if all the other bolts are tight because um, things come loose. But no, I completely agree. Um, and, you know, I, I think I think what I need to turn me around is I think what I need to turn me around is just an upgrade from yeah, the night. From yeah. the 1970s scroll saw that my mom and dad gave me for Christmas when I was a kid, because it's <laughs> the only scroll saw I've ever owned, and obviously we have come a long way since then. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll say yeah. That. So I mean, if it's been picked up by the arm as well, that can make it mess up. Bearings yeah. could have gone, need what might need oil in. Yeah, I, mean, yeah and that, I guess that's what you're talking about. That that could defer somebody else away from scrolling because they well, have something. Like that. Yeah. Well, I'm open-minded about it because I, I mean, I really do appreciate Dale Kirkwood and the work that he does um, with, with the scroll saw. Yeah, he does. Uh, uh, and um, I do appreciate that person that I shall not be named because he his ego is big enough. Um, and I like I like the work that you do, Julian, and I, and I love the work that Jamie does as well. And so it's not like I'm I'm, I'm opposed to scroll sawing. I'm not. I appreciate the talent and the skill that you guys put into it. It's just I haven't found a, a remedy that is successful with me yet let's put it that way um so one of the things i like about the scrolling and why i choose that is because like i said whenever i scroll i i put my music in i have my headphones on and i sit there and it's meditating like one of those before people i guess i don't i'm never i'm not a runner but i guess the the running high that people talk about it's kind of like that you just get zoned out and i've had people had conversations come up and start talking to me while i'm scrolling and i don't hear anything granted it's it's possibly because i have you know, my headphones and that you can't, I can't hear anybody, but two, I'm just so in a zone and I could just, shh. it's kind of very Zen. That's what I've always liked about it. I've gotten a couple of people else into it, sitting there saying, um, thanks Emma. 
<laughs> really appreciate that. I so can't wait until you come back again. Oh my god! I would love. So I've seen for sale some of those scroll saws that are done with the pedals, and I would absolutely love one of those. Like those oh, are yeah. to me, and I want one just so I could also do the same work. So people are like, oh, you can't do that on a cheap scroll saw. Really? I had no power. How about that? Yeah, there you go. There uh, you go. Thanks, there you go. Emma. Nobody likes you, Emma. Yeah, it's kind of like a. It's. I just get in the zone. I don't know. I like it. That's that's one of the reasons why I love about it. Yeah. I know uh, Jamie's in there. I know Dale gets in the gets in that zone because we've literally had conversations about it. It's like, yeah. I want to say I mean, hi, but just relax. You know, and and that's the escape. That is basically the escape because that's how I started woodworking was, and it wasn't. I didn't put headphones on because God, I worked in the music industry, so the last thing I'm going to do is put headphones on. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I went out in the shop. It was just an escape. I could concentrate on something with only the noise that the tools made, and it just it was a great escape. Um, well, Andy had asked questions, which I think are probably pretty mute right by now because he asked the Team Scrollsaw versus Team Turner, um, and I think we know the answer to that. But he goes. <laughs> He, he followed it up with, do you have a router? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, you can own it. You can own them. You don't have to use them. I've got two, and the only things that they get used for is whenever I go to either do – so I will use it on my scroll saw pieces. So <laughs> all my pieces. Andy, I love you, by the way. I make a frame, mm -hmm. I do, the, uh, I do, do rabbits. A, do a little, oh, so, okay. So it sits like the frame sits inside of it. So that's the Got only it. reason why I really truly use it, or if I need to do a round over on, on cutting boards and stuff like that. <laughs> now they literally stay in their boxes away. I make sure I do make sure I keep the scroll saw and the, the router separated. I don't need any of that in my shop <laughs> <not there. laughs> Richard is rolling over right now, going, I should really have made my effort to yep. get on the podcast today. Um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, well, Julian, I, I don't want to. I don't want to let you go without allowing you to promote yourself. So, I mean, where are you? And and, and tell people where they can find you. Um, like I said, so I was five by thirty workshop. Uh, since then, I've uh, recently, I guess, rebranded. I'm Wildcard Craftsman. You can find me on Instagram at Wildcard Craftsman on Instagram. Um, I have a YouTube channel, but that is still underneath five. the five by thirty. I believe it's underneath five by 30 workshop instead of woodworking. Um, I do have a Facebook uh, page for the wildcard craftsman says so Facebook slash wildcard craftsman. Um, I'm trying to post more over there. I'm currently looking at getting a uh, website made mainly so I can start selling things on it. Um, so hopefully when I get that up, it'll be wildcardcraftsman.com. Uh, that's pretty much all wherever I'm at. Awesome. Well, the not, Instagram. Out of, the, all four, let me know. <laughs> out of um, out of curious, uh, curiosity, what was the the the, the reasoning behind the the rebrand? Uh, rebranding. I know Jamie's been very vocal to me about me not rebranding. My wife has been too, but uh, I know. Do I have time to go back in the backstory of how Five by Thirty came? Sure. Yeah, 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 time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, back whenever I started doing woodworking again in Dallas, we lived in a condo in Uptown Dallas. Um, and we literally had a balcony because we were on, on the front half. We were, I guess we we're three stories up, whatever. So it wasn't very big. It was maybe you'd walk out the door. There's, it was about five feet from the door to the, to the end of the balcony. And then it was about 30 feet long. Whether those measurements are exact, I don't know. It's just about what I came up with. So I was like, I'm just going to make it five by 30 workshop. Cause if I can do what I can do here on this amount of space, and I literally worked in maybe a five foot by five foot area, maybe five foot by 10 foot area. But, you know, that's where I, I, I bring my tools inside, put it in the closet, take them back out. I did end up getting a circular saw, like a Ryobi circular saw and all that. But that's how I started. And then whenever I moved to Maryland, I kept five by 30, even though my shop was bigger, just because that's how I knew. And I was like, if I could do stuff in this area, if I could do this work in this kind of area, you can do it anywhere. It doesn't matter how big of a shop, because that's one thing that people think, oh, if I had a bigger shop, I could do this, I could do that. No, that, yeah. mm -hmm. like I said, that liquor cabinet right there holds over 80 bottles of alcohol, like full alcohol bottles, plus... Wait, 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 you've counted? Why aren't they in uh, the shower? Because 
I want to marry you. I need oh. to <laughs> no, the reason why I know that is because, again, my wife was an international flight attendant, so she'd bring home bottles of alcohol from around the world. And nine times, that, like most of it, we wouldn't you drink. You are a lucky man. Yeah. Well, we still have most of it. It's still at the old house, but we wouldn't drink oh, it. Well, I didn't so I to drink it. Just meant to have it. Yeah, it was all over the place. So I was like, I need to build something. She goes, we can, we can, we can buy something. I was like, I'm not going to buy something because it's not going to fit our needs. I was like, I got to fit all this in this thing. So I built it to where it literally housed the alcohol to where it'd be three bottles deep. Because the last thing you need is five bottles where you're sitting there scratching. You could just pull one or two bottles out and get what you need. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I built that around. I built that around our alcohol. Why is everything around me alcohol? I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I get that same kind of twist. <laughs> People always so, seem to pitch anyways, me, pitch so, me older, but you know, maybe that's my own um, problem. So, anyways, after that, I, I figured if I could do it there, if I could build this there, anybody could build anything for the most part. So I decided to rebrand after five years or so of having five by thirty. Because I felt like I've maybe not outgrew it. I just wanted to do a new name, new thing. Because I would go to people. They're like, I know, I, I know you have an Instagram. I know I follow you, but I don't, I don't know who you are. I'm like five by thirty. Oh, the Texas logo. Yeah, okay, I remember that now. I'm like it, it was kind of didn't click with people because it was a Texas logo with a five and a thirty. It could go any way. So I was like, I want to go something else that that fits me because I'm no longer just doing one little thing. You know, it was back before I was scrolling. And that right. was scrolling. I was like, now you know, I scroll, I turn, I can, I do make some furniture from time to time. Um, I could do all the cutting boards, all types of things, uh, getting into welding. So I was like, I'm kind of like a wild card. Like at any point, I'm a wild card at what I can do. Um, you know, uh, uh, so you got a diverse. You, you look, you have a lot of diverse products. That I mean, at least information or content yeah. that you put out. So it's diverse. Exactly. That makes so sense. It's kind wild of like a card. wild card of things, a wild card of trades I can do. And wild I mean, I may not be, might not be a master of things, but I, I could do a, I'd I don't want be a candy man, but I'd rather be the jack of all trades as opposed to a master of one. Um, so I, there's actually, honestly, that, I would. That quote is actually, there's more to that quote. I uh, saw something where they put those quotes, you know, you have like little quotes, but there's more of the quotes to that. It says, uh, I think that one was, um, Jack of all trades, master of none, because, and it went into talking about how it's better to know more things and not be perfect at it than to know only one thing that you're perfect at, because then you can't understand. You're you're more handy knowing more things, yeah, and knowing a lot more about it than you are about knowing everything about one thing. So it was pretty interesting when I saw. It. I was like, that's perfect for me. So perfect. Yeah, so that's kind of why I, I chose to do that. I'm trying to grow again. Um, I think also whenever I get the new logo, when I when I make when I design the new logo and everything, it'll help out because Sarah Connor gave me this logo and I told her I didn't want it because I didn't pay her for it. And I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, just give me free stuff. You know, expect it. She does no, great so work. That's that's her job. I'm not gonna. I don't want somebody coming up to my job saying, hey, can you do this for free? You know. Yeah. So I told her, I was like, I'll take it as a temporary thing. So I need to still get that up and the website. I mean, once I get things up like that, I, I feel like it'll fit me better. So that's why, that's why I did the rebranding uh, with a new name, with a new face. Uh, if you go in and you look at the stuff that I've posted since I changed the name versus when I was a 5 by 30 I've tried to get more product photos and product better quality photos of it. We're talking um, mostly Instagram here, right? Yeah, Instagram. That's mostly Instagram. I have not touched YouTube mm -hmm. um, uh, since then. I haven't. I, again, I need to get back on doing the videos for the scroll saw for beginners. Uh, Jamie and I have talked about ways of – actually, Chris, you're here when we talk about ways I can kind of transfer over that and rebrand that to mm -hmm. yeah. the, the wild card craftsman. Um so, because I think it's going to be weird when you have like two or three videos of scroll software beginners and it's all under five by 30. And then you see, you know, the other ones and this says wildcard craftsman. So I've got to figure out how to, the breaking point, like, uh, you know, merge point, I guess. I mean, we talked mm. about this last week and, I, you know, I, I don't think it really matters. I mean, I mean, you do, I, I take it you're doing YouTube. You're not doing YouTube for a career. You're doing no. it for you do it for giggles and and to get out with and get some interaction with the community and and possibly make some new friends. I mean, so I mean, you know what, dude? 
I, I, that's not something I'd sweat over. I mean, you know, yeah, like, well, do, yeah. do what you want to do on your channel and have fun doing it. And people will see that you're having fun and they'll follow you. It's, and that's, uh, that's kind of what I want. My, my whole thing with whenever I started the YouTube videos is it wasn't to make money. Uh, and I was like, yeah. I have no problem with people who make money off of it. I mean, me either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you don't. You're broke. Uh, <laughs> but no, I don't, I don't have any problems with those. I don't have any people. I don't have any issues with the people who like, oh yeah, that are sponsors or have ads. You know what? That's you. You do you. That's cool. My whole thing about it is I always wanted to go on there to help people. Yeah. Do you want to learn how to do this? I'm going to show you. Um, I'm kind of transitioning that. Like I said, I would like to transition and go between like an artistic thing like Jamie does. Like I love that. I absolutely love the music. I love the way your channel has changed and how you've gone into like the Zen. Jamie has of grown. Uh, yeah, not, not changed. It. Jamie has just grown, and yeah. and, and he does excellent work. Julian, I, I I don't mean to cut you off, but we are running short on time, and it's been awesome having you here. But stick around because we're not done yet. Because the bearded meister over here now has to sing his song. So if you will give me a chance to remove my headphones, Jamie, please go at it. <sighs> it's time for Jamie's page. Oh, dear God, <laughs> every <Okay>. week. <laughs> Am I, uh, I, First of all, um, I want to say uh, a public hello to uh, Julian's better half. So, hello. Hello. Um, we saw you. We saw you, by the way. Uh, we saw uh, you. She can't hear you right now. She's on the other. She's in the other room. It doesn't matter. I said it anyway. I don't care. So. <laughs> uh, secondly, um, I was approached today about um, the link for the stickers. So, that's going to be mentioned. So, if you want £20 discount off at checkout, um, you can go to makersinternationalpodcast.com forward slash stickers uh, and you can get um, £20 off at checkout, like I just said, um, off any stickers that you may want. Um, after that, you've got uh, my premiere starts in 33 minutes Oh, over please. on my YouTube channel. We couldn't help but self-promote. Go ahead. Of course not. Uh, and obviously, <laughs> Caitlin the Cat comes on 15 minutes after me. Um, so that's all for Jamie's page. So my shout out, um, goes to a guy called Gordon Pembridge. He's got 160 subscribers and man, he deserves a hell of a lot more. He's, he very, he puts videos out of, I'm going to say once every couple of months, but this work that he does, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not surprised it takes him a couple of months between videos, um, so he's, he seems like he's a turner and he pierces the bowls, but the bowls are really, really intricate. Um, and he, he colors them and it almost looks like it's uh, an actual painting. Um, but he's, he's, he must, he must honestly, it must take thousands of hours What's to do some of this again? work. His name's Gordon Pembridge. He's also on Instagram as well under the same name. Gordon Pembridge? I'd look him up. Yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, definitely, definitely de uh, check it out and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. But I'll say, is 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 definitely you can definitely see why it would take him a couple of months between uploads. Awesome. So right. yeah, that's my shout out. In case anybody's wondering, all the links to both Julian, his Instagram, his his YouTube, and also the uh, shout outs for today are in the description below. Just click on if you're on YouTube, just click Show More. And you'll see them all down there. Um, Julian, what about you? You got a shout out for anybody? Uh, yeah, actually, a, a buddy of mine I've known for several years out in Arizona. Um, Sam, Val uh, I'm going to screw up the name. I don't know why. Uh, Valdez or Valdez, he'll, he'll know. Uh, Sam, it's a beach, what is it, Beach to Desert Woodworks. I've known him for yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of good things right out of his, uh, he's a funny guy, a lot of, just right out of his basement or his garage. Um, he's also another scroller who, has made some amazing things from uh, his Delta scroll saw. And I've kind of helped teach him to grow and into it. He, he follows some of the other guys too. And uh, I'm just really proud of all the work that he's done and how, how much he's grown on that scroll saw. I, I really like seeing it. And, you know, that's not all he does, but yeah. Beach to desert woodworks on uh, Instagram. I don't think he has a YouTube. Well, go check him out. Give the boy some love. Awesome. Yeah. Um, right down. My shout out this week goes from goes to Daryl. And I've never had the honor of meeting this gentleman, but he seems like a, just a genuine good dude. Maybe one of you two have met him. Um, Daryl from the Dreadnought Workshop. Have you? Yeah, either, I've either, met oh, Daryl yeah. yet. 
seems like a good dude. Um, he put out a video. Um, I don't know if it was today or yesterday. I, I, I honestly, I forget. My short term memory is failing me. Um, anyway, uh, he turned an acorn box out of scrap wood on his lathe, and he doesn't mess around because Dale's got one of them yellow lathes. And you know what I mean by yellow? Aromatic. Lathe? Um, no, no, he's a paramedic lady. Oh, no. I mean, like, Daryl, Daryl, Daryl ain't messing around. Daryl's going to town on uh, him. Anyway, um, yeah, he just turned an acorn box out of a out of scrap wood. And I just thought it was a very cool video. He doesn't put music in his video. It's just the sounds of the shop, and he just turns it, and you get to watch him do it. And it's just awesome stuff. So, Daryl, I mean, yeah. God love you, man. Someday I hope to meet you. I've so, met him uh, once, but it was at, it was in Atlanta. I met him once, but I didn't really get to talk to him. And I would love to sit there and just watch him turn. I would yeah. love to uh, so another thing about Daryl is he's he's basically perfected the CA finish. Oh, has he? On, on on pens and things like that. Yeah. So if you go back and check some of his videos, uh, I'm sure there'd be a video on it somewhere. Go check out the Dread. Me that I still got to rewatch it. It's, it's the Dreadnought it. Workshop. The Dread. And then not K N O T, uh, wood shop. So go check it out. Um, anyway, yeah. that, that's my shout out. So Jamie, wrap things up, buddy. Yeah. So uh, we'll quickly uh, say hello to the the people out in the chat. We'll quickly. How about not everybody, but just you know several. Uh, not everybody. So obviously we've got the uh, <laughs> the inquisitive one, Mister Andy Pugh, Delphi Military Studios, uh, Huey Lions Heart, Cool Compare, uh, Cuz is out there. Uh, Circular Wood by Keith is out there. Uh, Pete Twisted Trees, Blue Light Turner, Brick House, Craftswork, Mark the General and Wood Turner, a few others out there. Emma, I had to mention Emma because she bullied you during the show. <laughs> uh, Thanks. So, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, that, 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 that's basically... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that's, uh, that's basically it for this week. So uh, until <laughs> next week, uh, in uh, I guess we're, uh, I guess we'll see you then. Thank you guys uh, for having me on, by the way. Appreciate it. Julian, thanks for coming on. And Andy, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for all the questions. And Dale, I love you, buddy. I miss you. Oh, man. Julian, thanks for coming on with us. Everybody else, have a great week. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>